Hey, I wanted to do a video about an additional benefit to having a magnetic implant in your finger. Uh, so obviously you can pick up small magnetic objects, uh, you can detect magnetic fields from like live wires and things like that. But another benefit I've discovered is um, magnets are able to distinguish between different types of metals. So usually, um, if you, you know, are used to uh, magnets and steel, uh, they are pretty capable of picking that up. Uh, but certain types of steel, uh, called stainless steels usually, or um, high carbon content, uh, what happens with these stainless steels is they're no longer magnetic because the addition of carbon and other additives into the structure of the crystal cause the total distance in the crystal structure between all of the iron atoms to be much greater and as a result they can't cohesively work together to create magnetism so uh, this is a um, espresso pot uh, the entire thing is stainless stainless steel uh, but despite the fact that it's steel, uh, it is not. It is not magnetic. Uh, what actually happens is, when they create the stainless steel, um, it's not magnetic. But if you heat it repeatedly or put it through other stressful mechanical processes that internally change the structure, uh, like the bottom of this pot has been through, it becomes magnetic again. So this actually, um, the bo the bottom is magnetic, but the sides are not because they haven't experienced the same direct heat. Uh, the same thing happens with uh, like cutlery, like forks. The tines of a fork have been processed uh, mechanically and often with heat, uh, which throughout that processing changes the magnetic properties. So the handle could be stainless steel and not be magnetic, but the tines might be magnetic, or in some cases vice versa, uh, depending on the processing. So that's an interesting distinction between, you know, the same material can have stainless and non-stainless steels that retain their magnetic properties. Regardless of whether or not a material is conventionally magnetic, it is impacted by a magnet. What happens when you introduce a magnetic field to any metal, including non-magnetic metals like aluminum, uh, is they uh, create something inside the metal called an eddy current, which means that at the point where the field is traveling through the metal, it is uh, moving around the energy within the structure of the metal and that is me converting directly this mechanical energy of me coming in contact with the metal, and uh, it converts it directly into heat inside the metal. Now, usually, uh, that doesn't actually produce a measurable amount of heat by like a human finger, but it, def ooh, it definitely is introducing heat. Uh, but another interesting effect is that um, because the mechanical energy is converted into heat, it goes somewhere, so if I, if this were just a piece of plastic, it would fall at the speed of gravity. But if I let it go on this large hunk of aluminum, the eddy currents slow it down enough that it takes a very long time because it's removing all that mechanical energy that gravity is introducing to this situation. Uh, so as a result of that, um, if I have a magnet in my fingertip and I introduce it to the bottom of this piece of stainless steel, it sticks and I can feel it. It is causing the magnet in my finger to get pulled out towards the magnetic material. But if I do so with this stainless steel, I, there's no pull whatsoever and I really don't notice any uh, pull from those eddy currents because the resistance of a stainless steel is much higher than the resistance of other metals like aluminum or copper which are used for like electrical wiring and stuff like that. 
that's why they don't usually use steel for those type of applications, it's much higher resistance in ohms than an equivalent amount of aluminum. But if I rub this mag or rub this aluminum along next to my magnet, depending on the size of the magnet, and the one that I have is a Titan, which is titanium coated and has a small magnet inside. It's about three millimeters wide by I think about two and a half millimeters tall. Uh, I can get a small amount of pull from the eddy currents as I rub it along this aluminum. So that kind of gives me the capability, especially with larger magnets like the XG3, uh, to distinguish between uh, ferromagnetic iron, stainless steel, and things like aluminum and copper that have high electrical conductivity but no resist or no uh, magnetic, you know, permeability. Um, so yeah, I think that's an interesting use case. Uh, it's kind of niche, but it expands our capabilities. So 